So a little while back I decided to make some pomegranate jelly using the pomegranates from our tree. A great idea, right? What could possibly go wrong? As you can see here, it came out just way too watery. Like a syrup or some godforsaken thick pomegranate juice. Needless to say, it was a disaster. A complete and utter devastating disaster. It pretty much made me rethink all the decisions that led me up to this point in my life. But it turns out it's possible to fix it. So I did that. I fixed it. And I forgot about all the decisions that led me up to this point in my life. Though I'm not 100% sure, I think the problem lied in the store-bought liquid pectin. Here are some tools I used for the job. Tongs, a jar lifter, and a funnel. I reuse the jars and jar bands from the first canning. You can reuse them as long as they aren't rusted or dented. And I bought new lids for sealing up the jars. In addition to these things, I used a big pot for canning, which I'm filling with water here. And also needed a ladle. I brought the water to a boil. Meanwhile, I cleaned the many dirty lids and jars with some old-fashioned soap and water and a little bit of old-fashioned elbow grease. After the jars were super clean and shiny, I put them in a pot to boil for 10 minutes. You can use the jar lifter or a good set of tongs to put the jars in. The jars need to be at least two inches under water. Then I brought another pot of water to boil for sterilization of the lids. Along with this, I also started to boil pomegranate syrup, stirring periodically. Okay, so I put the lids into the pot of boiling water to sterilize and turned off the heat. I also had to continue to keep an eye on the pomegranate syrup and stir it. As you can see here, our pomegranate tree is done producing for the season. It's a mature tree and produced so many pomegranates this season. We still have a lot left, even after using 25 of them for this recipe, as well as giving away bags of them and eating plenty at home. To do this fix, I referenced the recipe for pomegranate jelly in the William Sonoma book, The Art of Preserving, by Rick Field and Rebecca Korczesny. The original recipe I made was a modified version of the one in the book. But in the book, they used homemade apple pectin instead of store-bought liquid pectin, which I used. So the fault of the recipe not working was on me, not the authors. I could have made the apple pectin like a reasonable person, but instead, this time I tried using some store-bought dried pectin. Just to be safe, since I had eight bottles of pomegranate syrup from the disaster that was the first canning, I added one and a half packages of pectin, roughly 75 grams or 2.6 ounces. This might be overkill, but I wanted to play it safe. I added this to the pot and mixed it until it was fully dissolved. Voila, or something like that. Some way to say done. Ideally, it should be visibly coating the mixing spoon, like this. After drying the sterilized jars and lids, I added the heated jelly to the jars for canning using a ladle and funnel. While I was adding the hot jelly to these jars, I brought the canning pot full of water back to a boil. After adding all the jelly to the jars, I put the lids on tightly. 
If you're doing this, use a towel to hold the jar. Be careful because it's hot. Then I put these jars of pomegranate jelly into the canning pot using the jar lifter to boil for 10 minutes. Thank God for jar lifters. I mean, really, thank you God for these. Or the company that makes them. Or whatever. Something like that. Again, if you're doing this, be careful not to burn yourself. The jar should, as earlier, be two inches under water. Finally, I removed the jars, and each of them made a popping sound that sounded something like this. At the end of this process, I had six and a half jars of jelly. I added a half portion to a smaller jar for the taste test. Let's see if I can turn it upside down. The jars of jelly looked nice, but I needed to taste test the jelly. So I let the jelly cool and gave it a try on some white bread and also with some crackers and blue cheese. Oh my God, it's finally time. We're here. We're gonna try the jelly made from the pomegranates from a tree that grows in our backyard. I'll give this a taste. We're gonna try it on some bread first. All right, all right, put a good amount of it on there. Let's give that a taste. Mmm, that's so good. It's surprisingly good. It's just a really strong, concentrated pomegranate flavor. Mm. Oh my God, that's so good. I'm gonna put some on uh, crackers as well with a little bit of blue cheese, an affordable blue cheese that I found um, at the grocery store. Hopefully the blue cheese is decent. We'll deal with whatever it tastes like. Really good consistency. That's a lot of jelly. Kind of a weird combination, I think, but <laughs> let's give it a shot. Wow. It goes quite well with the, the pomegranate jelly. The flavor of this jelly was deeper and better than the original accidental syrup I made. So I'm gonna go ahead and recommend making mistakes and completely screwing up the recipe you're using to make pomegranate jelly. And not only learning from the mistakes, but seeing mistakes in general as gifts from the universe. Overall, I'm happy to say this was a success and you can rescue your jelly even when it's hit rock bottom or near rock bottom. And isn't this really a lesson for life? Check out some of my other videos here, they should pop up. And like and subscribe if you like the video and you want videos about gaming, cooking, nature, art, writing, and other interesting things. Thanks for stopping by.